Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Thursday, September the 19th. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Yes, you may recognize me from mainstream media as the Wolfman, but what I'm here to teach you is how to implement option strategies. I understand anybody can teach you how to build an option strategy. What I'm here to do is teach you how to implement those. There are specific time and place for options of any directional assumption. So we need to figure out with our directional assumption what option strategy best suits that environment in and around what we're looking at. All right, so without further ado, remember past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, let's get on with some economic data. All right, with across the pond, we're really not seeing a whole lot there. They did have uh, their form of the FOMC, which the MPC official bank rate votes. Uh, they decided to leave their official bank rate unchanged at 0.75%. That's out of Great Britain. And then uh, here in the United States, we got our Philly Fed manufacturing coming in at 12, expected to be 10. Again, or actually uh, 12, expected to be 10.5%. Nine, uh, so let's call it 11. Better than expected though, that is good. We're seeing these manufacturing numbers consistently doing well. We're not seeing them uh, recessionary at this point, really. I think that the economy is pretty strong. They even spoke about it. Ballard's the only Fed governor, really, that is touting that we really need to lower interest rates, and um, he is the St. Louis Fed. Uh, that being said, he's always pretty much um, a dove in a sense, or uh, sorry, he's a inflation hawk and uh, wants to uh, really lower interest rates and keep them low for a foreseeable future. Um, most of the other ones are thinking that we might be actually done for the rest of 2019. Uh, even uh, Powell was speaking about that yesterday. Uh, and he referred to the Philly Fed. Remember I talked about Philly Fed is something that most people don't really look at when we're looking at economic data, but the FOMC really looks at that Philly Fed and uh, or sorry, really looks at the beige book. And with that said, they also get like the blue book and stuff like that uh, probably a couple of days ago, which is reflective of what the beige book is and we get to see. So really an important economic uh, release that we need to keep our eye on. And then uh, also here in the United States, we got the unemployment claims pretty much in line with expectations at 208,000. Uh, the existing home sales came in very nicely at Five million, five and a half million, and uh, expected to be five point three nine million. So, all right, or five, uh, yeah, five point three nine million. All right, natural gas storages has not been released. The last I checked, let me just double check on that because I believe it should be out at this point, and it is. It came out at eighty four billion cubic feet, expected to be seventy five billion cubic feet. So, a build there, um, and that's about it for economic data. We do get Japan's. CPI number coming in later on this evening that uh, is going to come in after the close. All right, economics done. Let's get on to the overall markets. We've got crude oil moving a little bit higher today. Uh, it settled above that seven, uh, that fifty-eight dollar a barrel mark that we've talked about. That is the key area on the Fibonacci extensions where we've got uh, it lined up in the gold here. So that line right there did settle above there. So that was pretty bullish there. We tested that $60 a barrel, almost came just shy of that, and have since started seeing a little bit more weakness. I said earlier, uh, Saudi Arabia will be back online and back at production levels by the end of the month. So really not any detriment to the supply coming out of Saudi Arabia. Um, and I think that we're gonna see the oil start to move over. There is still tensions there, uh, especially with Trump trying to talk hardball with Iran. Um, he uh, is not going to be as lenient on stuff like this as we saw with Obama. So that you know is a wild card that we're going to have to keep an eye on. All right, gold futures are coming off by about ten dollars, but again, we are pretty much in line with what we've seen in the past here, where we are toggling as this acting as a support area right along the 1500 troy ounce mark all right so that is a support level 
and we don't have any Fibonacci's lined up again it is psychological all right that's where traders are going to be looking at to try and defend and it doesn't line up with a Fibonacci but we can see that that is coming to fruition all right bonds are back into the 160 handle after some of what Powell was talking about they are going to be very data dependent uh, and the market really started pushing higher on that uh, and I don't understand that because we've talked about the economic data and it's not really that bad. We saw it in the housing market. It's not hurting that with higher interest rates. Uh, so, you know, I would expect that the overall uh, retailer or the home buyer was looking at these data points that they would see it as um, a time to hold off on going out there and buying that house. But right now I talked to a couple of retailers and they say that the supply out there is pretty limited so it is a uh, seller's market at this point point. Um, and again we're seeing existing home sales doing very well all right VIX coming off we're seeing that happen because we're seeing the equities a little bit higher today uh, I talked about it yesterday I thought that we would see the equities move into positive territory as well uh, again today moving higher by about 74 points in the Dow Jones industrial average We've got the NASDAQ pushing up against the Fibonacci, or sorry, not Fibonacci, the value area high right here. Uh, you can see we tested that a couple of times in the past, uh, right here and here. And again, we're testing it there on that value area high. That is right there, lockstep with the uh, 8,000 mark. You know, that's a psychological level, just like we saw there with uh, gold at the 1,500 troy ounce area. This 8,000 is a key psychological level and it just so happens to line up quite nicely with the value area high here so that is going to act as resistance again i thought we were going to go up there and press those all-time highs i think that some of the um uh, it got tempered a little bit because of the mixed bag all these fed governors are really across the uh board on what they think we should be doing with interest rates uh, and I think that that's causing a little bit of turmoil in the market as to whether or not we can really sustain a rally higher. I think the economic data is continually showing that we can go up there and press those highs. We've got the E-mini S&Ps up 11 points. Again, we're seeing it start to lose a little bit of momentum here. And most of that is based on the fact that I think people are really trying to discern what was happening yesterday. All right. Overnight inventory was pretty flat coming into the day because we can see it got short and they flushed themselves out. Right now, we are very consolidated, not a whole lot going on here, but we are seeing the markets uh, move higher. This is basically on the, um, most of this was on the uh, uh, Powell speaking. So uh, when he was talking about the different Fed governors and things of that nature, that was most of that. Once he got done talking, we started to see a move. In gold, I did end up covering my um, my options in there, so we're out of that. Today's webinar is going to be on the long put spread, you guys. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, market commentary, I'm talking about implementation. Anybody can teach you how to put on a put spread. Some people will tell you to put on a put spread with the, uh, the long put, the long put spread anyway, uh, with the long put in the money. And I don't play it that way. I'm gonna have to show you specific rules to build this strategy out. You know, what underlines are good for the put strategy, all right? Or the long put uh, spread, all right? So we go into that minutia. Is this underlying even uh, uh, an appropriate candidate to trade the put spread, all right? So follow that, go to tr protraderstrategies.com, sign up for that because it isn't all about just knowing a long put spread is you buy a, uh, a put that's in the money, out of the money or whatever, and then you sell a further out of the money put to finance it or to limit some of your risk, okay? I'm gonna go into that minutia as to what strike location even we need for that uh, type of strategy. So go to protraderstrategies.com and sign up for that. That's all I got for you guys. Other than if you can't take that, Take it easy.